Welcome back to the wood shop. In today's video, I'm going to take you step by step in setting up my new 14 inch grizzly bandsaw. Your saw may be different than mine, but the principles should be about the same. I have other videos of the unboxing of this saw and also cleaning the cast iron table. I'll make sure to put links to both of those videos in the description below if you want to check those out. Off camera, I converted the power plug to a 220 volt and ran new wiring for a 220 outlet into this wall. The saw comes pre-wired from the factory for 110 and the owner's manual has diagrams and instructions for converting to 220. It's not too terribly difficult if you're feeling the urge. I'm still waiting for a new cover plate for the outlet which had to be special ordered. But enough about that. Now let's get on to the saw assembly. I'm just installing these feet. I wouldn't even really need these feet um, except for their, their rubber so they're going to absorb some vibration. So that's the main reason I'm putting them on and they'll keep it from sliding around a little bit being metal on metal. But really the base sits in the rolling cart pretty nicely. So I took the nut and washer and put it all the way down on all of these. So I'm just going to add the washer and the nut on the back side. These are adjustable feet. You can adjust them for getting it level. But once this base is in the cart and once the saw is on the base, I'm not gonna be able to adjust these inside the cart frame. So really they're just here for vibration absorption. And then I can flip this over onto the cart. I think this saw weighs something like 250 pounds. So it is a two person job to lift it onto the cart. So now I gotta find somebody to help me lift it onto the base. This is how it arrives in the shipping crate. Um, everything's pretty much installed except for the table and the fence system. The blade is installed and I'm assuming tuned to be in the right place and the exposed blade is protected. The base was, there was nothing to put together. It was all assembled. There's a door in the back. A couple of shelves for storing blades and accessories. I was doing the research and looking for the saw that I wanted, I saw on the Grizzly site that this thrust bearing was actually oriented uh, perpendicular to the blade, both upper and lower. Um, and I thought that was a odd design. It's not that uncommon, but it makes more sense for the thrust bearing to roll with the blade rather than sideways to it. So I actually got an upgrade from Carter Products, uh, a new guide system, upper and lower, and then the blade guard. And this is how it comes packaged. So uh, obviously this is what it came with from Grizzly.
Where's this supposed to go? That goes on there. So it needs to mount to this post, but there's not enough post and it's square. It's only around here and it only fits the only the round part only fits inside this. It won't go through this and that. This barely attaches with by itself. And this isn't long enough. No! So after a bunch of monkeying around with the new Carter blade guides, trying to get those lined up and installed, I discovered that they're not gonna work. The blade guard that goes that keeps me from getting cut up here when I'm focusing on work down here. It's not going to be long enough and it's not going to adjust with the full depth of cut on this resaw setup. And unfortunately I bought this Carter blade guide set months before I actually was able to get the saw set up. So now I don't know if they'll even take it back. And this, this Carter set was 200 bucks. Ouch. So, I'm hoping and praying that they'll take it back and understand my situation. We'll see. So now I gotta put the Grizzly blade guides back on, which is actually kind of okay because I think I might like the blade guides that came with the Grizzly better. They have better adjustability, so I'll show you details on that in just a sec. Now I've got the original blade guides put back on and now I'm gonna put the table on the saw. First thing we need to do is remove this blade guard and then also make sure that the blade is untensioned, which it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that blade guard. That's just a couple bolts. Loosen those up a bit. And that just slides off. Next step is to loosen this nut and remove this bolt from the table gap. And remove the table, table insert.
Okay. What I'm looking at underneath is to make sure that the trunnion bolts went through their saddle. You gotta get both of them at the same time. There we go. <laughs> okay, I just did this backwards. The gap is supposed to be on this side. Okay, no biggie. This is my first time doing this. There, that makes more sense. Let me show you underneath what I was aiming for. These are the trunnions and they come pre-installed with these bolts in them. The bolts have to go through the trunnion base. And then we add these star knobs to keep them in place. Well, that's easier said than done. Hold them down so they don't travel up. Now we got a bunch of dialing in to do with the blade guides. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. This is what I was talking about with the easier adjustability. This uh, Grizzly blade guide set has thumb screws and knurled knobs to make adjustments front and back and for the thrust guide there we go uh, whereas the carter set was all allen wrenches which if you've done any work with allen wrenches you know they're kind of a pain in the butt so this is a lot handier to have a toolless system that's not going to fall out of your hand when you're making adjustments so now we want the blade gullet to be just in front of this bottom blade guide. Oh, actually, before we do this, we have to tension the blade. Don't forget that. All right, now I got the blade tensioned. Now we can make adjustments. So we're getting our bearings just behind the blade gullet. We don't want the teeth of the blade touching these blade guides because they'll wear out unevenly and both the teeth and the bearing will get unnecessary wear. And now I'm adjusting the thrust bearing. We want that to be 16 thousandths of an inch, 0 0.016 inches. If you have feeler gauges, you can use feeler gauges. I don't know how else you would measure that. I should mention that all these adjustments are being made without the saw being plugged in. I have yet to plug the saw in at all. And it's a really good idea to follow the instructions too, step by step, because I've been taking things out of order. And not only do you need the blade tensioned, but you also need it centered on the wheel. Uh, and mine wasn't when I started making adjustments down there. So just slowly hand turn the upper wheel and make sure that the blade is tracking in the center of the tire. If it's not, you can make adjustments on the back with this hand knob. That looks like it's tracking now. And the blade is tensioned. Boy, that made a difference. Tensioning and then centering the blade. <laughs> so now the blade's where it's supposed to be. Now we can adjust the blade guides. Okay, I think that looks good. And then we can tighten this thumb screw down. And we can adjust this thrust bearing forward. Okay. 
And I've got a feeler gauge here. Got six thousandths and can you see that? Ten thousandths. So the two together are sixteen thousandths. And this is tricky. Bring that forward until it pushes the blade. And once we lock that in with that thumb screw, let's see if it held its position. That looks pretty good. And then we can adjust the these two blade guides in and out by loosening this cap screw and then adjusting the guides which are on a cam so they'll move in and out with an allen wrench put into the, this end it's going to be easier to show you this at the top bearings so we loosen this cap screw here to make it possible for these two to turn and they'll turn in either direction on a cam so this one is going to make it lean toward the blade but if i go ahead and change the direction it'll actually spin all the way down around back to the underside obviously we want both guides to be in the same plane parallel to each other not up and down like it was we'll bring it into slight contact and then back it off just a little bit while I'm spinning the wheel above there just off contact there and then this one see it's just kind of putsy dialing it in until you get it just so there you shouldn't really be touching or just like a dollar breadth. I don't have a dollar down here in the shop, but this feeler gauge is probably pretty close. So I want to just to barely move. Next step is to install the positive stop bolt. To do that, we loosen the trunnion knobs and tilt the table up and tighten that back down so it stays there. There's threaded holes here for this purpose. Not sure how far that needs to go in. And then bring the table back down. And then we put a square to the blade to make sure that the table is perfect 90 to the blade. And we just adjust this bolt until we get to 90. good. I'm going to put a back light on it just to make sure. Yep, I think that's it. And then we can tighten it down. And then once you're sure the table is perpendicular to the blade, take a look down here and see if your indicator is pointing at zero, which mine is not. So just take a Phillips screwdriver, loosen that pointer up a little bit, and get it pointed at your zero. Does it slide over? A little bit, but more of a tilt. And then lock that in. Now I gotta make sure the table is square to the blade. So I've got a straight edge on the back side of the blade. This, this is a 3 8 inch blade and there's not a lot of real estate to get a straight edge to rest against it front to back. So this is a little bit of a wonky process, but just doing the best that I can. A wider blade would probably make this process a little bit easier, but 
changing blades is, as you may know, kind of a pain. And this 3 8 inch blade is probably the one that I'm going to be using a fair amount. Except if I'm resawing, then I'll be putting a 3 quarter inch on. But anywho, so I'm lining up this straight edge front to back with the blade. And then I've got another fine ruler here. And on the back side, I've got 4 and 20, 30 seconds. And on the front side, oops, just moved my ruler. Four and twenty on the front, five and eight thirty seconds. That's quite a difference. So that means we got to loosen up the table and spin it so that it is square to the blade. What a pain. To rotate the table, I've got to loosen all six of these trunnion nuts. And that's going to be a real pain because that's a tight squeeze. And there's six of them. Three on each trunnion. Ugh, I'm not going to film that. I'm going to get frustrated. I can already tell. Now that we've got the blade and the blade guides in their proper positioning and the table is square and perpendicular to the blade, now we can install the fence system. Gotta make sure that blade is tensioned though first. Just thread a nut onto the fence lock lever and then screw that onto the fence base. And then on this other side, and we add a washer to the fence lock lever, thread it to this side. And then add the mounting plate on the back here. And position that on the fence. And then to mount the fence, we lock this lever down. And just slide this T-channel over that guide bar. And then oops, lock that into place. Or if you're cutting thin material, you can tip the fence on its face. Mount it in the same way over the T-channel. There we go. And we can get right up close to the blade. And then we want to make sure that the fence is lined up with our miter slots. I forgot to plug my microphone back into the camera. So this part doesn't have any audio. Otherwise, you would have heard me describing what I was doing. But basically, I used a fine ruler to measure the distance from the fence to the miter slot on both the front and the back of the table and was off by about a sixteenth of an inch. So I had to make yet another adjustment to the fence mounting thingy by loosening the four cap screws and then bumping the fence over so that it was parallel to the miter slot and therefore to the blade. And then carefully tightening the screws back down without bumping it out of alignment. And that's it for adjustments. Now the saw is almost ready for cutting. One last step is connecting the dust collection. I've decided to modify my saw's dust collection and I made a separate video covering just that. 
click on the end screen to see how I did that.